Hi, I'm Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and this video demonstrates a detailed DC circuit analysis. This problem is a classic. If you're taking electricity and magnetism, it's almost guaranteed that you'll have to solve this problem or a very similar variation on at least one test or exam. Given this circuit, with two voltage sources and four resistors, find the current through each resistor. The same current flows through the 33 ohm and 44 ohm resistors, so there are three unknown values to solve for. The strategy has three easy steps plus algebra. First, assume a direction for the current in each circuit element. Second, apply Kirchhoff's current law, also known as the junction rule. Third, apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, also known as the loop rule. And finally, solve the algebraic equations. There's no physics in this part, it's just math. All right, first I assume the current direction for each element. It's very important to draw this direction on your circuit diagram. It's also important to keep the same current throughout each branch or group of elements that are all in series. I'll start with I1 going to the right through the 11 ohm resistor and that current must also go through the nine volt EMF. I find it helps to draw the current arrows along the rest of the branch as well, keeping them in a consistent direction. Next, I'll put I2 going to the right through the 22 ohm resistor and to the right through the 1.5 volt EMF. Finally, I'll put I3 going to the left through the 44 ohm resistor and also up through the 33 ohm resistor and then fill out the rest of that branch like this. Next, I apply Kirchhoff's current law, which means that I add up the currents at a junction and I can write it mathematically as the sum of the currents equals zero. The current is positive going into the junction, so the current arrow points towards the junction, and the current is negative going out of the junction, with the arrow pointing away from the junction. For the junction shown, I1 and I2 go into the junction, and I3 goes out, so my equation is I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Again, I3 is the only current going out of the junction, so it is the only negative term in the equation. This circuit has two junctions with three or more wires, the one on the right that I just looked at and the one on the left. There's a rule saying that if there are n junctions, you can only get n minus one independent equations, so I can't get any new information to solve for the currents from the junction on the left. A quick check shows this to be true for junction B. I1 and I2 go out, so they're negative, and I3 goes in, so it's positive, and the equation is negative I1 minus I2 plus I3 equals zero. If I multiply that by negative one, I see that it's exactly the same equation that I just got, and it does not help me solve the problem. Remember, n junctions give n minus one useful equations. Next, I apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, which means that I add up the voltage differences around a loop and write it mathematically as the sum of the voltage equals zero. The convention here is a little bit trickier, so you just need to do a few problems to get the hang of it. The idea is to go around the loop in a single direction and add or subtract the voltage as necessary. As you go around the loop, the potential difference is positive when you go from negative to positive, or if you're going against the assumed current direction for a resistor. The potential difference is negative when you go from positive to negative, or if you go with the assumed current direction for a resistor. It's important to draw each loop on your diagram to help keep things straight. It also helps whoever's grading your work to understand what you meant and give you the maximum grades. I'll start my loop at the upper left and go clockwise through the 11 ohm resistor, the 9 volt EMF, then the 1.5 volt EMF, and the 22 ohm resistor, and then I'm back to where I started so I can write the equation. The first element I encounter is the 11 ohm resistor, and I'm going with the assumed current, so I add negative 11 I1 to the equation. Recall that V equals IR for a resistor, and we're adding voltages, also known as potential differences. Next, I encounter the 9 volt EMF going from negative to positive, so I add positive 9. After that, I reach the 1.5 volt EMF, and I'm going from the positive end to the negative end, so I add negative 1.5 to the equation. Finally, I pass the 22 ohm resistor, and I'm going against the assumed current direction, so I add positive 22 I2 to the equation. Then I reach my starting point, and the equation is done. Negative 11 I1 plus 9 minus 1.5 plus 22 I2 is equal to zero. There's an n minus one rule for the voltage law similar to the current law. This circuit actually has three loops, the one I just did, another similar one on the bottom, and one that goes all the way around the outside. With n loops, I can get n minus one independent equations, which means that I can get one more useful equation from a different loop. I'll choose the small bottom loop, again going clockwise from the upper left. The 22 ohm resistor is first, and the loop is in the direction of I2, so I start the equation with negative 22 I2. Then I go from negative to positive across the 1.5 volt EMF, so I add 
Next, I reach the 44 ohm resistor going with the current I3, so I subtract 44 I3 and do the same with the 33 ohm resistor before reaching the starting point. This equation is negative 22 I2 plus 1.5 minus 44 I3 minus 33 I3 is equal to zero. There is a third loop, but the equation from that loop is not independent. If I wrote that equation and tried to solve the three loop equations for the three unknown currents, I would eventually get zero equals zero and be unable to solve. Remember, n loops gives n minus one useful equations. Now I have three equations and three unknowns. The physics part is done, and all that remains is some algebra to solve for the unknowns. Gauss-Jordan elimination works well for solving these equations, but I'm going to solve them using substitution. I'll speed up the video to save you time. If you'd like, you can pause or slow it down in YouTube by selecting the gear icon, then speed, and choosing your preferred speed. First, I isolate I1 in equation two. Next, I isolate I3 in equation three. Then I substitute I1 and I3 into equation one and solve for I2. Notice that I2 is negative. The negative sign tells me that the current I2 is actually in the opposite direction to what I guessed on the diagram. I don't need to do the entire problem again though, don't worry. It's enough just to know that the particular current is in the other direction. Then I can substitute the value for I2 back into the expressions for I1 and I3, and I just need to carefully substitute negative 0.202 for I2 to get the right answers for I1 and I3. So my final answers are I1 is 0.278 amps, I2 is 0.202 amps, but it's to the left, and I3 is 0.076 amps. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics with one-on-one -on -one tutoring and pay-what-you-want video courses. To check them out, please visit my website at redmondphysicstutoring.com.